What's up guys, Ryan Schultz here with E39 Source. Today here from San Diego, California with my father's 2006 BMW E60 M5. Today we're doing a job replacing all four brake pads. We're using Hawk HPS, high performance street brake pads. Step one, you need a jack stand under the rear of the car. The rear differential is your center jack point. Jack that up, get some stands under the side marks, 17 millimeters on your wheel lug nuts. Break those free, take them off. Go from there. With wheels off the car, this is what a stock E60 brake suspension setup kind of looks like. We're used to working on E39s here on this channel, but uh, we should be able to deal with this. Uh, doing the backs first in hopes that they're a little bit easier than the fronts with much larger, likely two piston calipers. Uh, this is the caliper retainer clip, which we need a large screwdriver to get off. All right, guys, taking the uh, caliper retainer clip or the pad retainer clip off here, we're going to put a screwdriver right in front of it. This thing needs to move back, and then it just pops right out. So I'm going to set this up on this end, pushing towards the exhaust of the car. Give that a couple little pushes, and it comes right out like that. All right, back here on the other side of the caliper, you're going to find um, these black plastic covers that cover the bolts. Stick a screwdriver in there and pry the cover off. That's going to give access to seven millimeter tubular bolts. You'll need something something like this to take those out. Um, turn them quite a bit, and then you pull them out through the side, and that's the two bolts that hold your actual caliper on the wheel. Caliper guide bolts are out. Easy part now is simply sliding brake caliper off of the rotor. This is going to give us access to, of course, both brake pads. You'll see that the outer pad away from the center of the car. It's just going to come right out. Easy, set it aside. The middle, or the inside pad, closer to the middle of the car, is held into the brake piston. Pull a little bit, it clips out, and now hold your caliper up here or somewhere where you're not putting stress and tension on the brake line itself. Preparing to compress the rear brake pistons. Since the pads have worn down, we need to compress that piston in to make room for the new pads that we're putting in. It's a good idea to open the fluid reservoir. It's up here. Roll the clip now how to open that up. In order to gain access to our brake fluid reservoir in the E60, the S85 V10, it's, it's actually up here under your driver's side cabin air filter box. Uh, we do need to remove not only the filter and uh, filter box lid but the entire assembly so that involves first removing this entire piece of rubber trim it's only held in with two of these clips one on each side pull that out of the way remove your, um, your housing box lid here as if you're replacing the filter which is not so easy with one hand there's a 13 millimeter plastic bolt right here we just carefully turn that to, uh, to loosen pass that tool off and then this entire assembly lifts up and out giving us access to the filter if we wish. There's three more of these plastic bolts here. We'll pull those out and then this piece can actually separate from the other right here. You pull it up and out. Uh, if that is not the case with yours, then just do the same process over there, minding the hood sensor switch and whatever that other sensor is to remove all of this. On the driver's side strut tower, this particular car is actually missing the screw, but it looked like there would be some sort of a rivet or another screw that holds this housing onto the strut tower. Since that's not the case, we're just going to be able to, actually there's a piece of trim here as well. We'll lift this up, kind of work it around the, the actual hinge, like so, get this out of the way, and then uh, remove this piece straight up. Once that piece is removed, we have access to the master cylinder, probably a bunch of other stuff that we don't need, and that, which would be our fluid uh, reservoir here. When compressing the pistons, I've always been told it's a good idea just to let the, the fluid expand in here just by loosening the cap. And of course, top off your fluid afterwards, make sure it's nice and full. Essentially, we just put that C-clamp around the side of the caliper there. You can use a screwdriver over it if you wish. Turn it a little bit, push the piston in, making sure again that cap is open and you've just made room for your new pads. Ready to install the pads inside the caliper, go ahead and grab the one that has the, the uh, clip on the back. That's going to fit inside of the piston on the caliper. The skinnier side of the, uh, of the pad is going to go on the inside of the rotor. Same thing with the other one, except there's no clip. This one just sits on the inside of the uh, caliper here. We'll put that on, slide the assembly back onto the rotor, replace the 7 millimeter caliper guide bolts, put the clip back on, and we're done in the back. 
Welcome to the front rotors. We're going to start by pulling off the, uh, the caliper or pad retainer clip on the front here. These E60 front calipers are massive. This is an 06M5. I think they did change, but uh, this is what we're dealing with here. So you'll kind of see how it works. There's two clips here in the middle. Excuse my hands. Two clips in the middle, and then there's another two clips on the far side. This essentially keeps tension on the front half of the caliper here and the pad to keep it on the rotor like this. So we need to remove that tension with a screwdriver, playing around a little bit. Once you get it, this thing's gonna fly off and hit the ground. Um, it is held on here with quite a bit of force. As you can see, like that. That's what that looks like. Put that aside, clean it up if you wish. We're gonna come around to the back, remove those plastic bolt covers like we did in the rear for the caliper guide bolts. Notice the brake pad wear sensor. On the E60, there's one in the front, Next, there's actually two in the front and only one in the rear, kind of an odd setup. You just want to wiggle that out. It also goes in here. You can pull this out just to get it out of the way and uh, then move your wires around just so they're out of the way. But I'm going to go ahead and pull those bolt covers off and we'll use the 7 millimeter tubular bolt to remove the caliper. These are the caliper guide bolts. As I said before, 7 millimeter hex I used to set up like this. Um, we'll just go ahead and pull those out. The torque on these, since this is a San Diego car, were pretty much perfect. Since we've got that off now, we should just be able to slide the whole caliper off of the rotor. Um, when we let this hang, of course we need to be very careful that we don't leave pressure on the brake lines. The best way to do this is with the bungee cord hanging off your spring or some sort of this, some part of the suspension here. But I'm just going to pick it up and lay it on the spring, uh, just being careful again that we don't stress the wires. With the caliper turned up like this, we'll see the E60 has uh, two piston rotors here or uh, calipers. So I'm just going to grab that on both sides, pull the old pad out. You'll see there's lots of life left on these. We're really only doing it to, uh, to take down on brake dust. So that's probably a stock pad. Pull that out. And then this other one that is opposite side of the pistons pulls up out like that. Now we're ready to put a C-clamp on these pistons, compress them, making sure that we've taken the cap off of the brake fluid reservoir, go ahead and film that, which is right up here underneath the driver's side cabin air filter. Right here, make sure the cap is removed. The caliper guide bolts back in place, the worst part of this job, and in actuality, this is very simple working on this car, but putting this uh, caliper retainer, pad retainer clip, whatever this is officially called, back into place is definitely the worst part. Uh, the side, the part that sticks furthest towards the back of this piece, towards the rear of the car, those need to be pried by hand to fit over these lips. You'll see it's, it's very simple once you see how it is. It's just a matter of pushing the metal that way and then taking a screwdriver and popping these two tabs back behind there. That keeps this from moving around and it keeps your pad in place. Okay, after like five minutes with two of us holding these in place while we get these lined up, let's take a screwdriver in the middle, pry it out, and then I actually used our socket wrench and adapter there to press the center in and those clip into place. And when it does, you about fall on your ass and uh, it feels really good that you're done with the job. So now that that's back in place, we can go ahead and throw our wheels back on. We're actually cleaning the inside of these M5 wheels. Uh, we have new Michelin Pilot Super Sports mounted probably tomorrow and uh, that'll finish up this job. A couple days later, we're all done with the brakes. Everything put back down. Those lug nut bolts need to be tightened to approximately 79 foot pounds. There's skin 17 millimeter bolts, all that's done. New tires have been mounted. My dad chose the Michelin Pilot Super Sports. They're, what are these, 255s in the front, 285s in the back. They're crazy from TireRack.com. Had them mounted and balanced, and uh, he's going to go ahead and pull the car in the garage now. That's the job on the E60. Listen to a little bit of S85 V10 here for a minute. We just detailed the car. C6, say no, wheels, tires, glass, floor mats, engine. There it goes. Cannon with the 525 is working on the 355 today. <laughs> there it is. Alright guys, thanks for watching the brake video. Hope this helped you out. Leave some comments, subscribe. We'll talk to you in a future video.